morning, Zach. Um, <clears throat> we're in the middle of um, a revolution um, that not that many people know is going on, but it's really critical. And um, <clears throat> we've identified it already in one of our blog posts for the Life Process Program, which is there's been a rejection of the psychiatric approach to mental health and addiction worldwide. So on June 17th, the World Health Organization released its World Mental Health Report. And there are two things going on about that report. Um, one is the world's mental health isn't very good. It's been deteriorating. And it's been deteriorating lately. Um, and partly that's due to things we all know about COVID and crises in democracy and Ukraine. But that trend in mental health deterioration has been ongoing since at least 1990. And I'll tell you more specifically how we know about that. We know about that because um, <clears throat> the World Health Organization sponsored something called the Global Burden of Disease Study. And they identified every major category of disease. And then they developed health economics measurements to see to what degree in every country in the world, they, they identified 196 countries. That's a lot of countries. Um, uh, every type of disease caused disability and or death. And they, they, it's called disability uh, adjusted life years mm -hmm. because they're sort of adding up the number of years that are lost due to everything, <clears throat> uh, due to each of these diseases. And so that study was published in 2017, but they had begun accumulating information previous to that point and they determined several things. Um, one thing was that the United States is at the bottom of the pile, both in terms of addiction, uh, they, but it's not called addiction, it's called drug related dollies for cocaine, amphetamines and opioids. And we're number two overall worst in the world, 196 countries. And they did depression and anxiety and overall mental health. And we're close to the bottom for those as well. And so <clears throat> we've had this fantasy all along that we're on the verge of creating breakthroughs for mental health and addiction based on America is the most biologically and medically oriented society in the globe. And Nature magazine, for example, promoted in 2014 Norvolco as the leading edge in all kinds of drug research and addiction research. And so lo and behold, we're the worst. We're at the bottom of the pile. And um, just around this time, uh, uh, Norvolco has the National Institute on Drug Abuse where she's famous for quoted and for being saying, it's all about the dopamine. And the, she had a corresponding figure was the head of the National Institute of Mental Health named Thomas Insel, who believes the same thing. And Insel's now retired by a couple of years. And Insel, to some degree, has acknowledged a little bit of a problem that everything he's been promoting for several years, for decades, um, has failed. And he labeled it, the fact that American mental health is deteriorating. He, the phrase he uses is, it's an inconvenient truth. Isn't that a funny phrase, inconvenient truth? The convenience is, I mean, you, you can perpetuate there's fantasies that you talk about by talking about, um, you know, having 
bizarre abstract brain mechanistic kind of theories because on one hand you can always say well there are concomitant things popping up that we just can't deal with it's not our fault or you can say you know this is the truth but uh there's just no practical way to get around it yet but we're getting there and that's what they've been doing <clears throat> for 50 years both right. with addiction and with mental health but ironically when they try to be more empirical about it and actually, you know, hammer it down with these measures, they found the exact opposite is going on. That the more biologically, medically oriented health system is, like the US, the worse it performs, and that we've been getting worse worldwide, but the United States has been particularly getting world worse. But an inconvenient truth it's so funny. It's like, yeah, it's like what you're saying. It's like, oops, I just burped at dinner. Everything that we've been doing, and he, and he points out we've spent out multi-billions, both for the NIDA and the NIMH on these fabricated approaches to uh, mental illness and addiction. Uh, Erp, I beg your pardon. It turns out that everything that we've been talking about is a fake. It's a failure. It's not succeeding. And, you know, isn't it too bad that we now have to come to grips with this? And to his more or less his credit, Insul has come to grips with it. Um, and I like in this whole thing, I call it uh, the spaceship situation. Uh, and what I mean by that is every once in a while a cult comes along, you know, and they, for some reason, they decide that some interplanetary interplanetary spaceship is going to come land on the earth and rescue them. And mm -hmm. there's only one cult that believes this. Who was the last one? Hale Bop? Uh, they're, they're, yeah, right. There have been a lot of those. Yeah, there's one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forget. There's one. There's a documentary about one recently, which is what made me think about it. Um, and then, lo and behold, no spaceship comes. And so, the question becomes: Well, how do they deal with the failure of this prophecy? There's actually a famous book, way back in the '50s, called "When Prophecy Fails" by Schachter, Festinger, Schachter, and Bach, where they actually study the cult. And, you know, one response is a certain number of people just throw up their hands and say, well, that was bullshit. Where did they come up with that? And to some extent, the World Health Organization has had that response. They've said, you know, we have had this primarily psychiatric medication model and world mental health has been deteriorating. And they've been trying to walk away from it for more than a decade. And it turns out it's harder to walk away from than you might think. And one reason it's harder to walk away from is because so many people are committed to the cult that a little bit of failure isn't discouraging to them. And incel is sort of in an in-between position. He sort of back, he quit, he retired. And he points out, you know, the stuff that we talked about hasn't really worked. I'm kind of disappointed. You know, maybe it'll work in the future, but so he's sort of half there and half not there. And then the full cult member is Nora Volko. Because Nora Volko gives speeches where she says, you know, it looks like um, the brain disease model of addiction hasn't been that successful. But let me explain why you're wrong and mm -hmm. why we're still on the verge of developing some interventions in the neurosystem, in the brain system that will solve addiction. She's still pushing that. And she gets away with it because there's such a cult like, to some degree, the U.S. agrees, is that everybody in the U.S. is kind of a member of this cult that she's the leader of. And the World Health Organization is trying to push itself away from the cult. And so they do that 
in the World Mental Health Report. And they're having, it's a funny report to read because um, the global measurement came out in 2017, but they were already getting feedback before that, especially in the United States. Uh, in the United States specifically, they identified that mental health outcomes have deteriorated since 1990. And, you know, through whatever their measurement was at the time, 2013. So for a quarter of a century, at least, our mental health outcomes have been deteriorating. And so the World Health Organization has been trying as an organization to separate itself from that. And they specifically declare, we want to try and have a community health mental health approach. And by the way, of course, the uh, Alcohol, Drug Abuse and Mental Health Administration, the DAMHA, sometime earlier, around 2013 or so, came up with the same solution. They were asked to define recovery and they got a bunch of mental health and addiction and drug and addiction experts. And they came up with the four pillars approach, mm -hmm. you know, community, health, home, and purpose. And that's essentially where the World Health Organization is, that you need the support of the community to build essential underlying blocks of humanity and health and purpose and functioning and community. That's the only, there's no other answer. And they call, they speak about lived experience. But really, Nora Volko hasn't been treated in the least and Thomas Insel's done that trick where he retires and then he says, you know, all that stuff we've been talking about and that I've been pushing. He was head of the MIH for 13 years. You know, it's kind of bullshit, but he's no, he doesn't have a job anymore. He's just writing memoirs. And so this impetus towards creating this medical brain disease model continues even And so the World Health Organization document says, you know, we've been talking about this for 10 or more years, and we haven't made that much headway. And so the World Health Report highlights like 10 or 20 community mental health programs, which is slim pickings. You know, they're going to like a region in the world or a town, and they're saying, look what they're doing here. Isn't this great? And they're pointing at it. And but they're still fighting the cult of uh, addiction and mental illness as brain diseases. So that if you go to any place in America, if you talk to, you know, Biden or anybody in his health department, or for example, Vivek Murthy. Uh, who's now the Surgeon General again, they're going to talk in disease terms. Like, well, that's, everybody knows it's a brain disease. Although Murthy sometimes squeaks out a little bit. He wrote a book about the need for community. And so, for example, I don't know the details. We, some gun legislation is being passed. And a part of that gun legislation is mental health. And, you know, I don't know what that mental health component is. However, I did hear the word community. They wanted to develop community mental health centers, which is anytime the word community appears, you know you're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And another key phrase is lived experience. Do you, when, when I say lived experience, is that... What's that suggest to you? Getting into the context of a person's life. And they're actually how they experience it, which is something like, tell me what's going on in your life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not. How oh, do you see the world? How, you know, what are your issues? What, you know, what would help you? What exactly? And are you happy or depressed? It's not like, oh, let's do a brain scan. It's the opposite of brain scanning. Lived experience is tapping in to the person's ongoing narrative of themselves and their lives. And there's a sizable portion of America 
including it's uh, by far most of its mental health professionals who think, oh my God, that's so backwards. We're going backwards. What about brain science? What about the frontal globes of the brain? You know, that, that's where all the secrets are. And that's not where the secrets are. And thinking that way and spending billions, literally billions, I'm not making billions both from the NIDA and also from NIMH. It's like, you know, the Hippocratic Oath is at first do no harm. Getting back to the inconvenient truth that insults retired from, we've spent billions of dollars in areas uh, supposed, that are supposed to approach mental health, Im uh, improve mental health, solve mental health, cure mental illness and addiction, and they've worsened them. What could be more embarrassing than that? And so on I, June 17th, a bit of an arbitrary thing. They had a, a webcast or a, uh, you know, some kind of meeting, you know, which I attended along with how, I don't know, how many other hundreds of <clears throat> thousands of mental health professionals. And, you know, they had somebody sing a song and then they had like the prime minister of Argentina or, you know, Hungary, whatever country saying, Mental health is so important. And, you know, okay, I'm, I'm down with that. So they don't really have, not only don't they have time to get into any content, but they never are going to stand there and say, you know, we fucked it up over the last 20 and 50 years. Mm -hmm. Following the lead, That's not going to come out. They're not going to say, you know, why don't we have Stanton Peel talk and explain how we've really blown it and going in exactly the wrong direction. The report itself was filled with niceties, caveats, you know, kind gestures, politically correct statements that you know, don't piss anybody off. Right. Because. Except you. Right. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's a political document. Well, mm -hmm. it's, it's trying to be a mental health and a political document at the same time, which is true of Insul and Volko at the same time. They have their politicians, but both of them are true believers, except Insul is sort of wondering why the spaceship didn't land to take them to another galaxy. He's sort of like in a funny self-doubting position, which Nora Volko doesn't have. Nora Volko doesn't have a self-questioning component to her uh, thinking. Uh, Nora Volk is still saying, oh, let me explain why, <clears throat> although it seems like economic factors are critical, that people become addicted to many things besides drugs, that there's been, a, you know, we are up to 107,000 deaths annually now from drugs, although it seems like we failed at dealing with opioids and other popular drugs, all following the brain disease approach, uh, she became head of the NIDA in 2003. And in 1997, her predecessor, Alan Leshner, uh, Alan Leshner announced that addiction was a brain disease in science and it matters. In 1997, there were fewer than 10,000 deaths due to drugs. <clears throat> um, and now there are 107,600. A legitimate exponential increase. Really? They're, they're getting to whatever the next order of magnitude. And they're still plugging away. Norvold is still plugging away. So, um, yes, and we're, I'm somewhere, you know, uh, I'm sort of now imagining at some point they're going to say, you know, the World Health Organization is going to, you know, time out. There's one person that's been predicting this. You know, I wrote a piece for American psychologists called um, Reductionism in the Psychology of the uh, 80s. Can biochemistry eliminate addiction, mental health, and mental illness and pain? And I said, no.